Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts. Dear friends, we find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events. We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, Porsche takes pride in creating the world's greatest sports cars. And we are equally proud of PCA, the largest and most passionate Porsche club in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. This is the time for caring. In that spirit, PCNA is prioritizing the health and safety of our employees. Since March 16th, the majority of our staff has been teleworking. A few people remain on location to do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service. It helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case by case basis. So, make no mistake. Porsche remains open for business and we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound 
as fast as possible when the recovery comes, which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S and their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a highlight for me. We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels. With hashtag PCA together, it will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy and remember, never lift. Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts, dear friends. We find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. 
One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, Porsche takes pride in creating the world's greatest sports cars. And we are equally proud of PCA, the largest and most passionate Porsche club in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned, of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. This is the time for caring. In that spirit, PCNA is prioritizing the health and safety of our employees. Since March 16th, the majority of our staff has been teleworking. A few people remain on location to do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed, although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service. It helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre-owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. So make no mistake, Porsche remains open for business and we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound as fast as possible when the recovery comes, which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S, and their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled 
with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a Steve, highlight. are you on the audio? We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels. With hashtag PCA together, it will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy and remember, never lift. Welcome to PCA's Garage and welcome to the second episode of Tech Tactics Live. Uh, today we are going to uh, talk about uh, paint chips and paint scratches on your car. But first, hopefully uh, your family is safe and healthy uh, here in Columbia, Maryland today. It's beautiful outside, but we still have the stay at home order. Uh, again, we are able to come to the office for a short duration. We have about an hour to uh, spend with you today and I know most of us would rather be at events doing car stuff, right? But uh, since we can't, hopefully this will fill the void for you today. Uh, we have a, a black Boxster here, uh, and we also have a Fender. Uh, thank you to the folks at Europros Collision Center that they've donated this Fender for us to practice on. So with that, um, let me introduce two folks. Uh, I believe they should be on the line. The first gentleman is in charge of global business development for the Dr. Color Chip system, the system that we're going to be using today, and that's Tony Pando. Tony, welcome. Well, hello there, Vu. Thank you so much for the opportunity today. We're very grateful to participate. Uh, you and the PCA have been long-term supporters of Dr. Color Chip, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you guys. And hopefully uh, later on, Steve Bode will be joining us. He's the owner of Paintcraft. Those of you that are in the Southern California area might recognize, recognize him as Quinn the Eskimo. He's been to several PCA events. He's been to um, PCA Parade. And I know he's probably worked on a good number of PCA members' cars in that area. So with that, let's get started on paint scratches, paint blemishes, probably the worst thing you know, when you're driving, having enjoying the drive, you get behind a car or a gravel truck or something like that, and someone something flings onto your hood or your bumper or your fender, and you can just hear those, you know, rocks and pebbles dig into the paint. And I know it's not the end of the world, but it certainly just grinds at you, and, and you get home and you find these chips. Now, Porsche owners, we drive our cars. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is sort of a paint chip paint blemish repair, that's going to be for people that use their cars, um, might even show them at Concours, but it's not, it's not for, not necessarily for someone that is looking to bring the repair back to 100% stock. So before we get into the product and get into the blemishes that are on this fender, let's go kind of 101 education here, uh, if you don't mind. There's only there's only two cameras. I'm only here by myself in the garage due to social distancing. So we're going to have to do this a bit manually. So I'm going to slide this closer. Hopefully you can see. All right. So let me just see if I can get a thumbs up. Can you guys see this area here? Is it good? All right. So here's what I set up. This is your paint profile. So let's talk about that fender. Here is the metal of the fender. Uh, this car is a base coat, clear coat paint system. So this is the black base coat. And then here is your clear. Now your clear is gonna be probably the thickest layer. And talk about the different blemishes that you might find. Sorry, I'm out of the frame here. I'll kind of duck down. Um, the different blemishes that might happen. So the simplest ones, or let's say just blemishes that are sitting on top of your paint. Now, if you're lucky, let's say you rubbed against the side of the garage or someone kind of, 
you know, um, bird droppings or whatever it is, uh, you can use products such as a clay, clay mitt or clay bar, and you can just kind of wipe out that blem, and it's as good as new. Now, there are other scratches where, let's say, you someone's walked by with a zipper, and they've, they've dug a scratch into your paint, but it hasn't broken the clear. And to repair that, what you could do is simply use a polish um, of some sort to simply make the, the edge or actually take the divot out of the clear and make it even, right? So those are the two easier ones. Now, for big chips, basically what has happened is a rock has come here and chipped out of your clear, through your clear, and all the way down past your base coat. And now it's exposing the bare metal. I mean, that's a pretty big, pretty big blemish, right? And so what we're gonna do today is talk about how you can repair this, this blemish. To make it perfect, as I said, if you're expecting 100% to have it look like it came through the factory, what most paint shops will do is they'll go through and sand everything off, put back your base coat, and then put back your clear coat, and it would be perfect, right? If you're looking for the perfect solution. But, you know, rock chips and su such happen, and you're not gonna be taking your car to um, the body shop every time you get a paint chip. So let's go back to the chip. Okay, so with, let's say you use a regular touch-up, the one that the, maybe the paint pin that came with your car, the one that you may have bought. Most touch-ups fill this void and then leaves, and leaves sort of like a blob. We talk about the blob all the time. Excuse me. And when you touch it up with the blob, it really does leave like an unsightly leftover. And it, it's like a pimple and it kind of jumps out at you and it doesn't look very good. All right, so that's the more traditional way of touching up a car. Now with the Dr. Color Chip system, what it does is you're gonna be filling this void here with their paint. And Tony, feel free to jump in if I'm not explaining anything correctly or if there's more. Here you are explaining this perfectly in, in very good detail. Okay. Awesome. So now, now with the Dr. Color Chip system, what we've done is we've filled that void, we've overfilled it, and then we let it set for a few minutes. And that's the difference between the paint system that you're going to use with the Dr. Color Chip is it, it actually sets and dries and you can work on it fairly quickly as opposed to a OEM touch-up or another aftermarket touch-up that you might have to let set overnight. So once it's dry, the solution that comes with the kit, you're able to actually rub and take layers of this paint off. And then what you've done is you've leveled it to match the top of your, your, your fender. So is it perfect? It's not 100% perfect. The most important thing is to set your expectation of this repair. It's not 100% perfect. But what I like to say is from one to two feet, most people will never even recognize that you touched it up. And you know, it's an inexpensive repair. And again, with your daily driver, this is more than adequate to fix those chips. Got it? All right, let's get back to the bench. And Vu, if I could add one thing, I, I you know, in our conversations, Dr. Color Chip, um, one of the things that somebody said to me was, our product will make chips and most scratches look 100% better, but 
it's not a hundred percent repair. So we agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah, and the other thing I like about your system is this obviously is available to the consumer. It's a consumer product and for the most part, I would say 90, 99% of the painted surfaces that you're working with, um, if you mess up, you're, you can use the solution. I'll show you the solution here. Close up camera. This is the, the seal act. Um, you can remove the work that you've done and you'll just go back to the original chip. You haven't damaged any surrounding areas. Now, having said that though, I always, I always test on an inconspicuous spot on the car to make sure the chemicals. Um, I found really much older cars that might have um, lacquer paint or something like that. You won't be able to, um, you know, you won't be able to use it as well. So just be careful with that. All right, Tony, you yeah. ready to it, do it some? Work, it works there, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I was yeah. just gonna say, we're gonna get ready to work on this panel. You good? Yep. All right. Yes, sir. So don't worry, for those of you that think I destroyed a Porsche by taking the panel, this is not a Porsche panel, yeah. this is a Lexus panel. Again, thank you to the folks at Europros for providing this. So I'm gonna go up to the, to the close-up cam here and show you the different types of scratches that are on this fender. So here we go. So this leading edge here, this leading edge here, you can see very, very uh, minor you know, nicks. T the typical road rash that you would find either on the front end of your car, on your side view mirrors, or maybe even behind each wheel as it throws rocks up against the paint. Little nicks everywhere. The other common scratch is hopefully you can see it here. So oftentimes when you're opening your door, you'll bang it up, hopefully on, not on another car, but you'll get a scratch on this leading edge and I'll show you how to repair that. Other scratches on this fender, you'll see some surface scratches here and along the edge. Now this scratch here is the one that I described on the board first. This is more, like, more, more than likely a surface scratch that's only on the clear coat and again what you could do is thanks to the folks at griots for pro providing the solutions but you could use something like this a correcting cream or a fast correcting cream and simply polish that out and i would say probably 99 percent of that will come out what you don't want to do is try to use this color system to fill that in it just doesn't work as well you have plenty of clear coat on the car and just make sure you clean that up all right. Tony, why don't you share with the folks what comes in a typical kit to do the repair here? Well, in our kits, we have everything you need to start um, and finish your repairs. Um, first and foremost, when you order your kit, you order it according to the vehicle year, make, model, color name, and color code. And you can find the color code on your vehicle. Uh, you order the kit once you get the kit. We have different size kits. Our most popular kit and the one we're doing the PCA Club Special with is the most popular Squirt and Squeegee Plus. In that kit is paint matched according to your vehicle, so it's a, a perfect color match. You've got the Step 2 Blending Solution, which is the C-Lac. Uh, you've got a squeegee, pipette, glove, microfiber towel, wiping cloth, all of the tools you need to do the repair. And I know I can see on the screen here that you're showing them and whatnot, which is perfect. And um, so we um, have everything for you. Once you get your kit, like you said, Vu, you then just do the process. And then I know we're gonna go through it here. It's fairly straightforward. And I think one of the key words is just expectations. You know, this is a product that's going to make your chips and most scratches look much better. And uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, we just want you to have something that looks better, protects against rust, and leaves a nice flat repair like you demonstrated um, on the whiteboard. Okay, so good point. Um, I, I failed to mention, but hopefully it came up on the screen, is Tony has set up a special discount code 
for everyone. I believe it's PCA 2020, a 15% discount. It's, I believe it's 2020 PCA, isn't it? Or is it PCA? I think it's 2020 PCA. Uh, I think it's, okay, so we'll, we'll confirm. I think we have it posted as PCA 2020, Tony. Oh, okay. But we'll, we'll, okay. we'll make sure we get the discount code to everyone. Yep. Okay, so, oh, and also, Tony has given us two kits to give away today. So for those of you that are watching, make sure you comment. Um, well, if you have questions, feel free to comment, but make sure you comment with your uh, city, state, or province. And what we're gonna do is uh, gather all those that commented, and at 1.30, we're gonna take all those names and we're gonna draw two winners, and we're gonna announce the two winners at the end of this show. And we'll let Tony know who those winners are, and we will get the kits out to you. All right. Yeah, yeah. So again, setting expectations. Here's, here's what you might not wanna to consider to be a, uh, a repair that is typical. I mean, this is a pretty big area to cover. I would say anything that's more than um, anywhere between a, a, the end of a pencil eraser to a, a dime is, is a lot. And, and it's, you know, you can definitely make this better by putting, and I'll show you in a bit, by putting the touch up paint over it because your eyes won't be able to see the difference between the, the black and the silver, but it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be a smooth, surface such as this area so that's you know again setting the expectations and and knowing what you know this system can and cannot do so let's get started first i like to use just a degreaser just to get stuff off the fender you never know if there's wax or what other so getting that stuff off so i'm going to do this Oh, let me see if I can move it back here. Okay, so get that in. I'm also going to wipe down the edge, simulating a door scratch. And in the paint kit, again, here we go. They have little, like, I guess little stainless steel bearings in here that you, you make sure you shake up. Yeah. Shake up your paint really well. Just like, yes, sir, Vu. Just like when you go to the uh, home improvement store and you get a, a rattle can of paint, that uh, those BBs in there actually help you know stir the paint, if you will. Yeah. All right. So this is something that I bought. You can get this at your craft store. I think it's for plants or something. But anyways, it's to keep all of my brushes. And... The micro brush is what you'll get from the kit. These are just extra brushes I brought so I can demonstrate for you. So on this fender, you'll see there's a big mark right there and a bunch of little ones. And I've already shaken up. Shaking up my paint. And hopefully the staff can throw up the before picture. This is all before. So you can see the damage that this fender has sustained. And then you take your micro brush. So if you're gonna do one, one chip or two chips individually, this is what I call sort of the paint and smear, right, Tony? So I'm taking just a bit, yeah, I mean, it doesn't dab, take much. Smear blend. Yep, so I'm just dab, smear, dab, smear. Yeah. And this is a really, I mean, if you're trying to save your paint because you only bought a half an ounce or an ounce or whatever it is, it goes a long way if you do it like this. So those are just little chips. Oh yeah, that, that bottle of paint will do about 35 cars. <laughs> goes a long way. I think I just heard Steve chime in. Is that you, Steve? Yes, it is. Sorry for the delay. No worries. I know you were working hard out there in California. So um, just to share with you as I do this dab and smear, I met Steve at a PCA escape event about 10 years ago. And as he was working on customers' cars, um, I, was, I was intrigued by how the system worked. And he's like, um, here, try this. And he, he, had on his, he had his car there, and he had the paint color of his, his vehicle. And 10 years later, I'm still enjoying the product and the process. So right now I'm working on, these are line, little line scratches. 
and I'm filling them in and still doing the, um, the, the smear. Now, that's, that's probably the more common technique. Um, let me show you. The other thing that you'll need for this process, now this is not my crop top, and I don't think I would look good in a crop top. So I'm sure like many of us that have gone to PCA events and car events, you have tons of good quality cotton t-shirts that you just don't wear anymore. And I find, you know, I take the white ones or um, the ones without a lot of prints and I cut them up into little manageable pieces and use it for this product. All right, so that was taking the little micro, micro brush and dabbing it and smearing it. Another method I like to use and Steve, you get all the credit, all the stuff that I know about this man is from you. So thank you so much for sharing the knowledge. Right. You're very welcome. Now, some might say, wow, I can't believe you're sharing all these trade secrets. You, you can, you, you know, anytime Steve comes to your house or, or uh, someone that's doing Dr. Color Chip professionally, you can actually stand there and watch. I mean, there's really no way to hide the secret. So why or wouldn't they be concerned about this? how I typically explain it is we all can buy butter, sugar, flour, eggs, and we can all bake a cake, right? But for the most part, I think when there's a birthday that comes around, we all go to the bakery and we just simply buy a cake as opposed to making it ourselves. Now I'm sure there are people that are talented that can make their own cake, but for the most part, the, the people that are most efficient and they have the colors ready, they're already at your event, Someone like Steve, you know, I could do this in probably 10, 10, 15 minutes. He probably does it in half the time, or he just has that special technique that just is just more efficient. So that's why, you know, I, I think Steve and, and folks like him don't mind sharing what he's doing because it's not, it's not a hidden secret. I mean, you can look it up online and, and figure out what they're doing. So am I right, Steve? Uh, yeah, and if I could add to that, you know, I've been called the best touch-up guy in the country. Uh, not that there's any kind of contest out there, but uh, it's, it's really, a, so my background is in fine art. You know, I've been working with paints, you know, since I was a little kid. But uh, my results are really a combination of the product, the Dr. Color Chip product, which is just brilliant, and my art expertise. But with that, I would say probably 80% of the chips are pretty slam dunk that you can just do if you've never done this before. Yep. Uh, Dr. Color Chip has made it super duper easy where you know you can just uh, you know uh, move the paint into the chip, wait a few minutes and rub off the excess and you get pretty damn good results. Uh, my expertise is when there's you know tens of thousands of little chips or uh, scratches can be especially uh, troublesome. But uh, and you know I'm more than happy to show anybody how to do it uh, just because I like uh, know teaching people and so if anybody has a particular chip that they're troubled by feel free to send me a picture of the chip uh, email it I put my email in the comments there and uh, I'll give you pretty exacting uh, instructions on how to pull that off all right so let me just show the folks here with the close-up camera um, the the dab and smear section and then let's say you have a lot of chips this area here is sort of like kind of a shoe shine process. I'm simply, now this does use up a lot more paint, so you gotta be, that's what you gotta be comfortable with is using a lot more paint and you're just kind of slathering it on and it also takes a little bit longer to set, right? So while that's drying, yeah, the, go ahead. The, and, and Vuv, I'll just add that that, that shoe polish method is great. Um, uh, and there's a one ounce bottle of paint that comes in your kit. That one ounce bottle of paint will go a long ways. And um, so using the shoe polish method is okay. You're not going to run out of paint or anything like that. But I also want to backtrack while you're, while you're doing that um, yep. and comment on Steve Bode, who's been, I mean, Dr. Color Chip is 18 years now in the business. So we've been around a while. And Steve Bode, if I'm not mistaken, has been supporting Dr. Color Chip using Dr. Color Chip for probably about 13 or 
14 of those years at least. <laughs> um, Steve um, is a very well recognized person in this industry and he's a huge supporter of our products and he's created a, a career for himself and, and some employees. Um, but uh, you know, Steve's been a, a great advocate for the brand. He is somebody that's a go-to guy for us um, nationally with, with different people and different questions. And to, to your point, Vu, there has been, uh, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of people that use our stuff professionally and commercially. But like you said, somebody like Steve has the expertise above. He can make a better cake than most people, yep. you know? He exactly. truly can. And, um, you know, yeah. I, I say that we've been around for a long, long time, and, um, and Steve's very, very good at what he does, and, and we're great to, uh, grateful to have him um, as an advocate for our brand. So I'm going to show you sort of, you know, this big scratch here that, that I said was probably challenging. This is one where someone like a Steve would do a great job in, in hiding it. I'm going to attempt to do it here live, but Steve, don't laugh at me if I don't do a good job. Um, so this one's not, this one, because it's such a large area, you're not going to be able to do that with the micro brush and you're probably not going to blend it. So. Um, Get yourself a, a, a pack of different types of brushes, different sizes, and just simply fill it in, right? Fill it in. And just, you know, it's, again, it just takes practice to make sure you put enough on there, but not overdo it where you have this ugly blob. And it might take a couple of coats. You know, you do, a little bit, let it dry, and then come back and give it another layer just to build build it all up. So I'm not going to do all of it. I'm just going to do a big chunk of it. All right, so right there, that's a pretty significant difference, right? I mean, I think on camera, it's probably hard for you to tell what I just touched up. Now, in the sun, under the sunlight, um, and in person, you're going to be able to see it. I'm not going to lie, but it looks better than it did. And again, just you the owner or the person doing the job will always know it's there, but the idea is it doesn't draw your eyes. It's not so obvious and doesn't you draw your eyes to it. So I think that's, we'll, we'll let that dry and we'll put another layer on it in a second. So while this front is drying, let's go to that door scratch. Again, a very common area is people open up their doors and scratch it up against a wall or scratch it, scratches it up against a car. What do you do there? And this one, you could, you could put the paint on and then blend it if you want, but I find I, that I can just carefully just run a trace. Can you guys see? Make sure you can see here. So I can just run a trace, nice continuous bead of paint on the edge there. And with these micro brushes, it's, you're placing the paint just where you need it and not overdoing it. And just that alone. Boom. Look at that. Oh, let's see. So now your edge scratch is gone. And if you wanted to blend, you could, but I find you don't really need to. Do you, do you blend those, Steve? Or you just leave it as is? Uh, your video is delayed, so I can either listen or I can watch. Oh, sorry. Yes, there's a few second delay, but let me just hold up one more time. That's, that's simulating a door right. edge there and I just ran a bead along the edge scratch. And I would normally just leave it like that. On some edges, that's what we would say, Vu, is you know, some edges, because of the friction of when you're trying to use the remover, the step two sealac, the friction can very easily pull the paint off of that edge. So I agree with you that, you know, I would use one of the fine brushes. You know, the, your, the kit comes with three different brush sizes and I would use one of the tiniest brushes and just draw that bead, and it will take your eye away from that, you know, uh, contrast of a silver edge, it'll be a black edge, 
with a nice fine bead on it because sometimes that, that is a, ch a challenge. So this is another piece that comes with your kit. It's like a silicone squeegee. And let me just kind of show you how that works. And then we'll start to blend the rest of the paint. All right, so let's say this scratch here, if I put a certain amount on there and I just want to leave a thin coat, what you can see, I'm just going to drag and pull that paint across. So you're not leaving, what I like about using this method is it doesn't leave that much paint on the car. So when it comes to blending, um, it goes much faster. When you do the shoe polish method here, you have a lot of paint on the fender. So it, it takes a little while to blend, but if you do it like this, you'll blend it pretty quickly. All right, so I think this is dry enough. Any questions out there that we can answer? Um, you know, uh, there's one here from Reinhard Hustle that just came in, which I think is good. Um, is there a difference in application between metallic and other paints? And 65% um, of the paint we make is metallic. When we get that paint code from you, that paint code is going to tell us the formula of how to make a specific color. And in today's automobile market, 65% of all cars are metallic. So. Um, we do put the flake in and we make it so it's a perfect match. I will say... Uh, I, I'd like to add to that. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, so, Reinhardt, uh, so as far as, um, you know, rubbing off the paint for metallic paints, uh, this is really where the art comes in because you've got the yeah. metallic flakes that have to lay down correctly so visually it looks the same as your original paint. So if, say, in uh, metallic silver is probably the hardest. Uh, like our Arctic silver, uh, and yeah. if you find that if you're wiping the final, um, you know, area up and down, and the, maybe the paint looks too dark, if your final swipes are then horizontal, then you might find it lightens up a little bit. So, the the idea is really to get those metal flakes to fall in the right direction. So when you look at it visually, it matches uh, your original paint plate. And let's talk about colors. And Steve. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Yes, yeah. yeah, thanks, Boo. Because Steve's on a, on a really good point, and it's something that I really want to highlight. Um, and Steve, I'm going to ask this as a question to you. When you have, say, the Mercedes 744 Brilliant Silver, or Porsche Silver, or Arctic Silver, um, the process of application is putting a, 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 a dab of paint next to the chip and flicking it across the chip which in essence will make that metallic flake lay more uniform. One of the old ways of doing paint chip repair when you just put in a paint blob and let it sit there like Boo was showing earlier, that metallic flake is going to lay all cockeyed and not uniform. So the actual smearing of the chip, or of the paint, excuse me, smearing that paint will make that flake lay down. And then when you do the removal process, like Steve emphasized, um, it's going to actually make it look even better. Would you, would you agree with that, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, like on a bright silver car, it really depends on where the chip is. Like if it's on the side of your car, you're standing up and looking at a steep angle down towards it. So uh, the light's going to be a lot different than, you know, if you're sitting on the ground looking at that chip. Or right. if the chip is on your hood, and you're more likely to look straight at it. So... Um, you know, you ha really have to, uh, look, uh, you know, which direction are you going to look at the chip from? Are you going to be sitting at the ground looking at your chip or are you going to be standing up looking at it? So, right. you know, right. there's some judgment calls to make there. But, uh, yes, it's that final, uh, I call it the dance, you know, to get those metal flakes to fall the right direction. Right, and that's, that's where... You know, the brighter the metallic, the more that is an issue. Right, and that's where your experience definitely comes in, and that's why your by having you do it, the cake comes out nice and uniform, and the piping's perfect. Um, and, and talking about colors as well, it's it's not a happenstance that we are working on on a black car today. I think working on black cars, red cars, yellow cars, um, there's a dr dramatic 
improvement, difference, and, and effectiveness on how this all works. Now, if you have other colors, they work as well too, but you have to finesse them a little bit as we were talking about with the silvers. Um, any kind of color with lots of, uh, I call it pigment, uh, dark blue, blacks, reds, again, yellows, uh, they, it works really, really, really well. The, the lighter colors, the metallic colors, they work too, but you're gonna have to practice a little bit more. Yeah, and Vu, if I can add, um, white pearl, bright silver, and gold are probably the toughest three colors, I would think. Steve can give oh, yeah. me more info on that, but, uh, <laughs> but those are the toughest colors because there's not a lot of contrast. Correct. Like the, the panel that you're using right now is black. When you have those road rash marks or chips or whatnot, they're white, right? And so they shine. So you're going to get rid of, there's a lot of contrast there. But on like a silver car, like a silver car with a silver scratch, that's probably one of the toughest repairs. That's when I myself would call Steve. That's exactly uh, right. Yeah, um, I, I would say far and away, uh, the most difficult is the pearl, pearl white. Yeah, pearl uh, white, yeah. for sure. So that's where the art background really comes in. And if anybody has, it probably be easier if you have the pearl question, uh, send me an email and I'll just give you a pretty long list of steps that you can take. All right, guys, we yeah. are at yeah. the, I think, 135 mark. And so let's start uh, blending this paint. Again, what we're doing here is the seal, seal lac solution is formulated to work with this paint, meaning when I blend it, it's going to chemically react and I'm able to lift off the paint pretty easily. I know a lot of people have asked me, well, can I use my OEM touch up and do the same process? I find, and you guys can chime in here, I find that does not work well. One, because the uh, aftermarket or OEM uh, paint may not may take a lot longer to dry, but it doesn't chemically react with the seal act here as efficiently, and it just takes much longer. Um, yeah. On that note, uh, on ahead, that note um, removing old or removing touch up with uh, OEM touch up paint. Um, if you'd like me to talk about that, because I'm sure that's a big question because it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to put a copious amount of the pink juice here. It's the same stuff that's in here. And now here's the technique is you're not applying a lot of pressure. You're letting the liquid do the work. And the, the, because the fiber on the, um, the t-shirt is not deep, it just kind of skims across. Much like if you were to clay the paint of your car, you're just trying to get this cloth to ride along the top surface uh, of the paint to remove the excess. If you apply too much pressure, what's gonna happen is the cloth is actually gonna fall into that divot that I showed you earlier, and it's gonna remove that paint. Now, it's not the end of the world. You can kind of start all, all over, but just know what I like to do is just kind of start to just lightly rub it everywhere and let sort of the, the juice start to break down. Hopefully you can see, break down the extra paint that's riding on top over the area that needs to be filled in. And you can start seeing it come off here. And again, remember this area because I use the um, just the dab and smear and then the squeegee, there's a lot less paint to remove. So I'm getting to the final, final uh, repair much quicker here than I am over here. So I'm just gonna work this one first because this is what we started with. And sometimes, again, you know, just practice. If you go too far or you want it, the paint to be closer to the surface, um, or the, if you want the repair paint to be closer to the surface, you can just simply add another dab, do another smear, or do another squeegee, and build the layer up. So 
already start seeing that's filling in. And now we're gonna go here. This is a lot more paint. And again, this is where practice will get you better results or quicker results. Heard a race car there. Oh, that was for me. <laughs> Any other questions online while I'm wiping this down? We've been answering, Steve and I have been answering some questions from some folks, but we're more than happy to uh, answer any more. I mean, we've got, uh, there's about, looks like 60 people watching, which is great. Great. And then I follow up with a little sort of buff with a microfiber. And again, I think the test really is within one to two feet. If you don't notice it anymore, then I would consider it a success. Will it be perfect? No. But man, for, for most little chips and scratches, one to two feet away, you'll, you won't even notice them again. So this uh, is the- Vu, while you're doing that, I'll- uh talk a little bit about how you remove touch-up from an OEM touch-up? Yeah, absolutely. Or other touch-up. Uh, so, you know, assuming that it's been there for a while, maybe you bought a car and it's got uh, paint blobs all over it. You can use the same pink juice or seal act from the Dr. Color chip, uh, put a few drops on, a, on the same very soft t-shirt cloth and a few drops of acetone that'll uh, strengthen the seal act. And you have to very, very gently rub away the chip and it won't, it'll take a little bit before the chemicals start working. So, you know, don't push too hard or you'll start scratching the car, but uh, use the same process, but just strengthen it a bit with some acetone. And doing that, you're also uh, softening the clear coat. So uh, it's fairly likely you'll start to scratch the clear coat just very, very slightly, uh, which is a super easy fix. So. After you knock down the OEM touch-up paint to where you're happy with it, you may need to go over it with uh, just a soft uh, buff or you know just some uh, a buffing wax or something like that, and uh, it should be able to knock it out uh, pretty easily. But uh, you have to be super patient. Yeah, and that's that's where out. I would throw the asterisk, um, you know, for folks that are watching to understand that and when you're introducing something more aggressive like an acetone and such, uh, there is a point of, there could be a point of no return. So you have to be very, very careful. The stuff that comes with the kit, you know, it's, 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 um, I would, let's say, let's call it dummy proof. <laughs> so you're not gonna make it worse than it already is. But if you introduce something aggressive like an acetone, or if you start to wet sand a scratch or something like that, then just make sure, one, you've practiced um, somewhere that uh, is not, you know, the middle of your hood or, or, or door. Um, just just in case all right so while Steve was talking about the OEM touch of repair I just added a little bit more paint because there was a couple of drops that were uh, a couple of spots that I wanted to raise the level of paint and now I'm just going back and removing the excess and Zhu, you're bringing up a good point, and this is something I actually learned from Steve probably about seven or eight years ago in a conversation we were having. He was doing a retail customer's car, and what I, and I, I'll let him pick up, but Steve, there was, if somebody wants to get a chip more level, what they can do is do the repair and then maybe wait a day or two and come and build it up, correct? Uh, yeah, you can, so you can use the Dr. Color Chip system in more of a conventional uh, sense where you layer, 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 if, you know, um, if you need to keep on bumping it up higher and higher. So, um, you know, let's say you uh, squeegee the paint in or rake the paint in and then you go to rub it out with a cloth and just the nature of the cloth digs it out ever so slightly. You can continue to layer that up further and further and each time you do you slightly 
thinner and thinner paint each layer. So you're putting, you know, right. I think on, on an atomic level, you know, you're putting, uh, you know, like 10 atoms thickness and then three atoms and then just one more atom of paint. You know, like, 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 that's probably kind of ridiculous, but uh, just to prove a point, uh, mm -hmm. each time you add a layer, you thin the paint out a little bit more and more and more. And I think that's sort of the, for those that do like full on Concord restorations and they have the original base coat and clear coat, I think that's what they do too, is they just build up layers and layers and go above the, the surface level and let it dry um, to you know full hardness. And then they knock it down with an abrasive and polish it out. And it's essentially what we're doing, yeah. but their process is gonna take a lot longer and and again, it's a little bit more aggressive. And if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing, you can make a, a worse mess. But that's why they're the pros, and they can do it in that fashion. Yeah. So, and just to reiterate that a little bit, so that the old school method, it might take you two weeks to do a chip, uh, but with the Dr. College chip method, you can get uh, very close to that quality. But you can do a, a few thousand chips in a couple hours versus you know, a couple of weeks or a week right. to do a, a chip. Uh, so, you know, the old school method is super time intensive and, you know, it has, you know, uh, you have to do it because you can't pay somebody to come out and do that to your car. Uh, and it's more likely, you, know, you can screw it up. Uh, but the Dr. Color Chip method, uh, it is pretty dummy proof. I mean, if you aren't happy with it, just dig the paint out and do it again. Yep, exactly. Right. All right, while you were talking, I went to, went back to that huge gash or that was on this edge here. And this one, I am just simply being an artiste and just painting it on and trying to be smooth with it. Again, this, this repair is not going to be anywhere near as impressive as the chips that we repaired. But to someone that's driving a used car or, you know, would, wants it to be repaired but don't, doesn't want to spend thousands of dollars to have their complete fender repainted, you can do this and live with it. All right. So, uh, I... I'm not sure how many people logged on today, but I know we have some winners for the two kits. And let me see if I can't find out their names here. They were randomly selected. The kit winners are Hector Bjarns and Gregory Lodermilk. So congratulations guys. And thank you to Tony and Dr. Kulichup. We will get those kits out to you after the show and I am almost done here yes, with sir. This. almost done with this one all right so if I could ask my team to throw up the before shot and then And we'll give them the after shot here. Okay, so with this repair here, lots of paint. It's going to take a while to dry. It's still going to be faster than if you were to take an, you know, an OEM OEM paint stick. Um, this here I've blended. You can continue to add more paint and blend. Wait a day, as the gentleman uh, mentioned and you know make it even better and better and better and raising that and filling up the holes but let me show you look at this how does that look can you guys see there i know there's a little bit of a delay uh-huh right so there you have it and then we already showed you the door edge repair All right, so how are we doing on time? We're at about a, an hour and 50. Anything else that I didn't cover, Tony, Steve? Uh, I, no, think I think you're, you're pretty good. good. I, 
Yeah, I am just double checking right now the coupon code. So okay. I want to make sure that we have that right here for you because people are going to want to go order some kits. Yep. And um, let me see. So hopefully that was pretty easy to understand. Showed you how to repair little paint chips, kind of hide big, ugly gashes that you might have. We went and fixed the uh, common door edge, learning the difference between uh, a blemish that might be sitting on top of your paint versus one that's gone through the clear coat and how to address all that. Again, I wanna thank Tony and Steve I want to thank Grio's Garage. I want to thank Europros for providing the fender. Gentlemen, if there isn't anything else, yep. we are going to wrap this up. Are uh, there any questions? or? Only thing I have, guys, is the code is PCA2020. PCA2020. So we had it right. <laughs> Good. Yep. Well, thank you for chiming in. Yep, yep, if there's yep. a future Tech Tactics Live topic that you would like for us to address, just send us an email or put it in the comments section and we'll see what we can do. Again, because of social distancing, we're limited to camera angles and being able to draw you in closer to what we're doing. But hopefully when things get back to normal, we'll have actual people managing the cameras and we'll do this as one would normally expect. And I hope you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here today. Awesome. Thanks, dude. That was awesome. awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Great stuff, guys. Have a great day, and I uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you guys. Thanks, right. Steve. Be safe Thanks and healthy, you. everyone. Bye. See ya.